Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Gordon Miller along with Ray Ferraro. A tremendous reception for Canada as it came on the ice. Safe to say, Ray, that when this team was picked, Boone Jenner of the Oshawa Generals was picked for games like this and the ones to come. Absolutely so, Gordon. He's been one player that has played to his capabilities throughout this tournament. He's been versatile. He's been physical. He's been everything that Coach Don Hay and his staff had hoped for. Right from the first game of the tournament, we saw Boone Jenner make his impact known to the Canadian team. So physical, leads the tournament in face-off percentage, and a second-round draft choice of the Columbus Blue Jackets has really displayed a mean streak to his game. Number 27, Ryan Murray. And so on this New Year's Eve with Todd Harvey, the captain of the Dream Team in 1995, the last time this tournament was held in Alberta, it's Canada against the United States. That Canadian team went 7-0 to win gold. This Canadian team will have to go 6-0 to do it. The starting goaltenders are brought to you by Chevrolet, driving our world forward. Scott Wedgwood is 19 years old from Brampton, Ontario. Place for Plymouth of the Ontario Hockey League. He made 26 saves for a shutout. It is only start in the tournament against the Czech Republic. And the starter for the United States is the highly decorated but deeply disappointed Jack Campbell. He's a three-time gold medalist for the Americans at IHF competitions, including the 2010 World Junior, when he was the winning goaltender for the Americans in overtime in the gold medal game against Team Canada. He plays for Sault Ste. Marie in the OHL. Don Hay is 10-0 as the head coach of Canada's national junior team. He was behind the bench in Red Deer back in 1995. He's the coach of the Vancouver Giants of the Western Hockey League. Once upon a time, he was a 12th round pick by the Minnesota North Stars in the 1974 NHL draft. And for Team USA, the head coach is Dean Blaze, who guided the U.S. to gold two years ago in Saskatoon. This year, the Americans will be no better than seventh, their worst finish in the World Junior since 1999 when they were eighth in Winnipeg. Don Hay, we, we had the opportunity to speak to him prior to the game. We asked him, how do you play this game? Simple answer for Don, it was all out. Is there any other way to play? Canada will not play again after this until Tuesday in the semifinals in Calgary. So Hay wants a good performance from his team which has had some wobbly moments at times. The one concern for Canada, penalties in three games so far. Canada has been shorthanded 17 times. They went through a video session as we knew they would after the game against Denmark. They, they put all eight penalties up on the board and the only one that they liked, there was one penalty out of the eight that was of the physical variety. The rest were hooking, high sticking, and tripping. He wants those eliminated as much as possible. For the eighth time in the history of the World Junior Championship, it's Canada and the United States on New Year's Eve. And we're underway in the final game in Edmonton. Later on tonight, Russia takes on Sweden. The winner of that game will finish first in Group A. And already a big hit that time by Quentin Howden. Zarnik got bumped by Howden again as Austin Zarnik comes racing in on Scott Harrington. Has had a tremendous tournament for Canada so far. Tied for the tournament lead at plus eight. He had four points in the game against Denmark. Centering pass, Tanner Pearson with a shot. And Jack Campbell makes the save. Two seconds in. A face off as Boone Jenner will take it. Jenner, as you mentioned, number one on draws in the tournament, 75%. Michael Bourneval, number 10 out there for Canada, back in the lineup after missing the Denmark game due to illness. So Canada back to close to full strength. Of course, Devontae Smith Pelly out for the tournament with a broken bone in his foot. Suffered in Canada's tournament opening, 8 1 win over the Finn. Even Johns finds Nick Bukestad, a returnee from last year, who has just one goal for the U.S. in the first three games. He among the top-line players who has not produced for the U.S. We got a penalty right away. 
High sticking is the call, and the U.S. will get an early power play. Dougie Hamilton is clearing the puck out of the zone, and on his follow-through, the stick will catch the American player right here. Archibald in the upper chest area. So the Canadian shorthanded the U.S. on the power play. They got a couple yesterday against the Czechs. Two minutes for high sticking. Both of them on the power play. JT Miller plays for Plymouth in the OHL, facing down his club team goaltender. And Wedgwood able to make the stop. And we are proud to have in the building tonight and being introduced, the one and only. Played a game in more than 30 years and remains as iconic as ever. My favorite player growing up. Mine too. Fought a, fought a kid to wear his number. He didn't get it, eh? 22. <laughs> but to that kid I fought, I had breakfast with Bobby this morning, so take that. There's Wedge with another save on Zucker. And of course, coming up. We got Chevrolet shoot for a million. Bobby, the head coach of that squad. In comes Brendan Gallagher with a drive. Campbell kicks it out. And here's TJ Tynan with it. Icing the call against the U.S. on the power play. For a coach that wants only four minor penalties per game, now they're on even thinner ice here with Don Hay. Perhaps an accidental high stick to Dougie Hamilton, but the penalty killers get on the ice early in a game against the Americans, and whether this game has any implication or not, it is a very important game for the players. There is bragging rights to it. There is the pride of playing and beating your arch rival. And you don't want to go into the medal round playing poorly. Brett Connolly with it. He's got a shorthanded goal for Canada in the tournament. He scored in every game as well. So fulfilling the promise that surrounded him when he was loaned by the Tampa Bay Lightning straight out of the NHL to Team Canada. Now Jamie Alexiak goes back, but Wedgwood plays it away for the Canadians. And back to pick it up is Adam Clendenning. Derek Forbert, the defenseman, not playing tonight for Team USA. He was injured in a collision from behind that drew a five-minute major against the Czechs in their game yesterday. And Forbert suffered a knee injury that will almost certainly keep him out for the rest of the tournament. Ryan Murray fires that back up to center ice. Quinton Houghton coming in, penalty to the U.S. And Vyacheslav Bulanov makes the call. That'll do it for the American power play with 11 seconds left. Their penalties qualify as good penalties here. Loose puck, Clendenning pulls down Howden as Howden's got a step on the turnover. The fleet Howden has a stride and he's going to most certainly be able to drive this puck to the net. Clendenning pulls him down. So we'll have 11 seconds of four on four hockey before the Canadians will get their first power play. Draw one by Gallagher, but poked away. And jumping in is Jared Tenorti, the hulking defenseman for Team USA. And the save is made by Wedgwood on him. Stone collided there with Watson, but Schwartz slides it ahead to Gallagher. Brendan Gallagher plays for Don Hay with Vancouver. The Western Hockey League plays that to Jonathan Huberdeau. And Huberdeau looks down to Mark Stone. He centered it, and Schwartz couldn't reach it. And on the power play now. As Dougie Hamilton out of the box sets it up. Hamilton sends it across to Schwartz. Jaden Schwartz back ends it across. That pass skipped away from Gallagher. Hamilton back to Schwartz. Stone standing in front. Hamilton with a drive off a leg and wide as Austin Watson blocked that. And Tynan sends it down the ice for the U.S. Schwartz picks his way ahead slowly, drops it back for Nathan Beaulieu. Now Ryan Strom feeds it back for Scheifele to pass in behind him, and the Americans are way shorthanded. Zarnick sends it ahead to Emerson Edom. Edom in, shoots, it goes up high off the glass. Edom, one of the top goal scorers in the Western Hockey League for the Medicine Hat Tigers, has yet to connect in this tournament. And he would be one of those four forwards you'd look at and say their production has been most disappointing for the Americans. 
along with Zucker, Saad, and Bukestad. They, they were supposed to be the core of this offensive push for the Americans. They just haven't got it done. In comes Mark Shifley ringing it around. Waiting for it is Ryan Strom. Back to the line is Gormley. Brandon Gormley nifty move and a quick shot. Pinball down in front. John's got a stick on that. Here's Shifley with it. Feeds it back in front and couldn't find Tanner Pearson. Now the Americans clear it out with just seconds to go in this power play. Nathan Beaulieu oh, played Nathan forward Nathan against Nathan Denmark with Canada short up front. And now Gallagher picks his way in. Brendan Gallagher. Got Boone Jenner along with him. And now Bournemouth digs for it. Gallagher is shot and Campbell makes the save on him. And Gallagher takes a late shot, but that'll be a penalty to Jared Tenorti. It's a bad penalty by Tenorti. After the whistle, he shoves Brendan Gallagher. So the Americans are shorthanded again after just killing off a Canadian power play. Gallagher runs into the official, but they keep the puck alive. Nice work by Michael Bourneval and a sharp angle shot by Gallagher. Gallagher gets shoved from Tenorti. The penalty call is made immediately. And in my opinion, the best U.S. player in this tournament so far sits in the penalty box. And his dad, Mark, who played 12 years in the NHL, is saying, that's a penalty? He made a living doing that. Yes, he did. Back of the power play. Stone drops it back. Dougie Hamilton. Put Gallagher trying to center it. Stone can't reach it. Now Gallagher back on it to Stone. The Dougie Hamilton. Backhands that across to Schwartz. Schwartz feeds in front of the pass too hard. Gets by Gallagher. Now Dougie Hamilton. Back across. Huberto centered it. Stone scores! Mark Stone! Unbelievable! In the pregame, we showed all of Mark Stone's goals, the longest being 20 feet 5 inches. This might stress that limit. Now watch where Stone goes. He supports the puck. Now he's out at the top of the circle, but he gets himself back into the zone without moving more than a couple strides. Stone opens up the pass lane from to Jonathan Huberto, and Huberto's pass is perfect. But what is most impressive and is the epitome of a goal score is how that puck is off his stick in a millisecond. Seven goals in four games, and he's just getting started. Ray, you go back to the pre-competition and then back to Brandon. He has scored 24 goals in his last 21 games. He's on a roll like very few people have ever been on. And now he's only three off the Canadian record for goals in a tournament. John Anderson and Dale McCourt set it in the first official World Junior Championship back in 1977. They scored 10 times each. Stone's not done yet. Power play goal for Stone, and Canada leads 1-0. In comes Emerson Edom, backhands that in front. Wedgwood makes the stop, and he hangs on. 13.51 to go on New Year's Eve in Edmonton. The most efficient of goal scorers is Mark Stone. He doesn't have to move too far, but what he has been able to do is find the open seam, a couple of strides, a little bit of a shift of the pass angle, and Huberto's pass is on and off Mark Stone's stick so quickly, he's got seven. On 15 shots in the tournament. Doesn't have to shoot it a second time. There's icing called against Canada. It's hard to remember a player on a goal scoring run like this. He scored in every game now. He also scored in all the pre competition games. And as you mentioned, had 13 in his last 14 with Brandon. So let's think about Mark Stone. How often, Gord, can you remember him carrying the puck through the neutral zone in this tournament? Never, because that's not his strength. It is a great quality to know your strength. Mark Stone knows it as a shooter. Move it to the side, get into position, and finish. Some guys never figure it out. Jacob Truba being harassed from behind by Schwartz, who nearly took a penalty there. Now Jason Zucker, the American captain, brings it ahead. Zucker was the youngest player on the U.S. team that beat Canada for gold two years ago in Saskatoon. Boone Jenner brings it ahead. Long drive on Campbell. Beats that up, and there's no rebound.
Well, there is Mark Stone, and the key to this play, of course, is getting open, but Jonathan Huberto's pass is right on the tape. Huberto with nine points in the tournament. Remember, he did not skate at selection camp at his, all. His first game in five and a half weeks was game one, was the second to last pre-tournament game. Broke a foot November the 5th playing in the Quebec League. Made Team Canada despite not practicing, scrimmaging, or playing in the first pre-tournament game. There's a chance for Huberto jamming at it with Campbell. And now Stephen Johns gets into Huberto's grill and some pushing and shoving. And now remember, supplementary discipline. Anything done in this game could result in a suspension for the medal round. And these scrubs are the things that the players have to be most careful of up for the Canadian roster because the Americans, in essence, have nothing to play for. This is a nice play by Stone getting the puck out front. And now it becomes a free-for-all as Clen Denning and John start knocking around Jonathan Huberto. As best as you can, you have to hold your head in those scrums. Off the draw, TJ Tynan takes off for Team USA. Plays that for Brandon Saw with a shot that trickles wide. And Gallagher on it for Canada. Shifley ahead for Schwartz. And Jaden Schwartz, whose World Junior last year ended with a broken ankle in game two, flips that ahead. Saw it, backhands it in front. Bolu broke it up. Schwartz can't find it. And gets hit there by Austin Watson. And now Watson and Bolu collide. You can imagine in almost every whistle they'll be chirping between the two teams. These players are very familiar with each other after this long playing against each other and the younger international competitions. There's the captain of the Canadian team, Schwartz, and the captain of the American team, Zucker. They play at arch rival Colorado College and Denver in the United States. Both schools absolutely despise each other. They are the leaders of their team, both at school and here. We've got a developing story in Calgary where Switzerland had a 4-2 lead on Slovakia, but the Slovaks have battled back to take a 6-4 lead late in that game. And the winner of that game gets third place in Group A and a spot in the medal round. And the Swiss played the, the Russians so tough, they pushed the Swedes to a shootout. And that game is now a final as Johns comes in and shoots, and Wedgwood steers that away. So Slovakia is in the medal round as Bordeval comes in and shoots Campbell the save. And Bordeval fights off Clendenning, feeds that in front. No one there for Canada. Brandon Gormley swings back from Murray River, PEI. Plays for Moncton. Now picking the Phoenix Coyotes. Brett Connolly jumps in. Kevin Gravel steps into him. Now scooped up by Freddie Hamilton. Hamilton shoots Campbell the save. Hamilton is the oldest player in this tournament. He turns 20 tomorrow. There's Ryan Murray with a shot. That's tipped wide. Truba sends Howden flying. Freddie Hamilton wins the battle for the puck. Connolly with it in the corner. Looks there for Howden. Trickles off his stick. And Campbell pounces on that. A quiet start for Scott Wedgwood in the Canadian goal. His latest stop is a clean look from about 35 feet as Stephen Johns risks the puck. Wedgwood, who is, was very solid in his only start in the tournament, has been as good as any Canadian goaltender. In my opinion, the best of the Canadian goaltenders since the start of the selection camp. Going back to December 1st, as we take a look at Mark Visentine, he's got just one loss in the Ontario Hockey League since December the 1st. Ice in the call against the U.S. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. So just to set the scene with Slovakia erupting for four third period goals, the Slovaks will take on the Finns in one quarterfinal. The other will feature the Czechs against the loser of the Russia-Sweden game, which we'll have for you later tonight on TSN2. Bitter disappointment for the Swiss, who took the Swedes to a shootout 
And played well against the Russians, but they collapsed in the third period in the final round robin game. Ryan Strom backhands it back for Mark Messick, who plays here for the Edmonton Oil Kings. And a loose puck bounces around in front. Archibald leaves it there for Bukestad. Back to Clendenic. And Clendenic failing that shot. Huberto kicks it ahead. And Strom was away with Huberto. Jonathan Huberto works in. Back heads it in front. Campbell will save. Rebound for Strom. He couldn't poke it home. And now Mark Stone picks it up. Sends it in front. Schwartz with a shot. He missed high and wide. That combination normally works the other way. It's Schwartz to Stone. Now Stone picks it out in the corner. Feeds it in front. Schwartz scores! Jim Schwartz, 2-0 Canada. The Canadians are on a change as Schwartz is on the ice. Coming in off the bench. Stone finds him and he misses the net. I asked Don Hay if he was concerned at all at the lack of offense from Jaden Schwartz the last couple of games, and he felt that Schwartz had been on the outside too much. Had to get to the middle of the ice. Well, this is wonderful work by Mark Stone behind the net. And there's Jaden Schwartz, five feet in front of Jack Campbell, and the Canadians have a 2-0 lead. Borrows a seat from Mark Stone's office, takes a pass from him and scores. Stone has his second assist of the tournament to go with seven goals. Canada leads 2 0. That plays offside at the Canadian line. So two goals on 11 shots for Canada. Strong work behind the net by Mark Stone as he takes the initial check from Bukestad, pushes his way off using the boards as a lever, and then finds Jaden Schwartz right in front, unattended, at the top of the crease in front of Jack Campbell. Jaden Schwartz, who plays with his brother Ryland at Colorado College. Ryland, one of the top goal scorers in U.S. college hockey, has 16. Last year, they had a third member of that line named Schultz, so the line was Schwartz, Schwartz, and Schultz. Play by play nightmare. Ooh. Glad we don't do those games. Connolly, in for Freddie Hamilton, drops it back in behind Quinton Howden. And then Dougie Hamilton slams into Edom. Gonna find out what kind of backbone the U.S. team has here. Down a couple in a game that doesn't mean anything to them. Where you play for your jersey, play for pride. And the crowd all over Jack Campbell. How much Jack Campbell's gonna be able to do about the first two that beat him. Both of them from directly in front of him, forwards uncovered. Campbell's a bit of a target here. In Edmonton, I thought of the goals that he had, had given up against the Czechs yesterday. Just one of them he might have been able to do something else on. Again, the Americans, when they broke down, they broke down in a in a bad way, giving up, giving up man advantage breaks or wide open players in, in the slot. Boone Jenner in for the faceoff against Arnold, and that draw controlled by the U.S. A rare faceoff loss for Jenner, but he gets the puck right back. Gravel with it. Kevin Gravel, 19-year-old who plays at St. Cloud State, lost the puck to Tanner Pearson, and Pearson picks it out neatly. Feeds it back to the line. Ryan Murray tees it up and just missed wide. Garnick has it now. Headman's it for Zucker. And Zucker comes in. Harrington reaches in and takes that away. And then Pearson comes over and hammers Gravel. Michael Bourneval, lead pass for Pearson. That was deflected, so icing waved off. And Campbell's back to pick it up. Zarnick sidestep the check, and now Jenner comes in for the loose puck. And Jenner still battling, plays it down to Bourneval. Bourneval trying to find Stone, who's loose in front, and the pass went off to Bell's skate. Kasik plays it back in deep. And the Canadians will complete a change as Bourneval is in deep. Plays it back for Alexiak. Pesic with a long shot. That's blocked back to Alexiak. Winds and fires. Just missed high. And Bourneval centers it. Stone trying to find it in his feet. Couldn't. And Zucker has it. Shoots it right down on Wedgwood to get a change. But Wedgwood sends it right back up the ice to Strom. We saw that earlier by Wedgwood. A beautiful setup 
against Denmark on the power play. Shifley steps up. Knocks that down neatly, but Tenorti's got it for the U.S. And the capital London Knights moves in. He's got a couple of players in this game and three at the under-17s in Windsor. Formley, long lead pass, chipped ahead by Connolly. And that'll be icing against Team Canada. So coming up, there is Barry Kasmer on the right, Bobby Orr on the left. Barry's got the special shoes to go on the ice. That's handy. I can guarantee you one guy's more nervous than the other there. Yeah. So Bobby, a couple years ago, coached a million-dollar winner in Vancouver. Darwin Head, the winner in that shootout for a million bucks. Had a couple other close calls in recent years. Always entertaining to watch. I always think that's a way easier scenario than the kick for a million. But once you get on the ice in front of 16,000 people, there's a million bucks on the line. A whole different deal. And that probably looks like a keyhole as they're standing out there. John Merrill lost the puck to Gallagher. Brendan Gallagher busting in. Looks in front for Freddie Hamilton. He spins off a check. Hamilton centers it. How a shot, and Campbell made the save without a stick. And is able to hang on. You're watching the 2012 World Junior Hockey Championship from Edmonton. Jack Campbell's been busy in the USA net in this first period. Again, a wide open Canadian forward that Campbell has to deal with. This is a nice cycle play from Hamilton to Quinton Hout. And Campbell's able to make the save, and more importantly for him, hang on to it as the U.S. was outnumbered in front of their goal. 13 to 6 of the shots on goal in favor of Canada, which leads 2 to nothing. Got a glass issue fixed, and while we have this quick moment, I want to say thank you to all the volunteers and staff here in Edmonton who have been so terrific for this portion of the World Junior Championship. The caravan heads down to Calgary tomorrow for the medal round. And we've been well looked after here. In Edmonton. How do you like your first World Junior? It's been great so far. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing a couple of the other teams in tournament play, notably the, the Russians and the Swedes, as the games start to have even more significance. Ravel sends that down the ice, and there's an icing call that will send you to Farhad Lalji. Gord, following their loss last night to the Czechs, U.S. Captain Jason Zucker said, we will win against Canada. Now, this morning, you wanted it made clear that was not a guarantee, but as players, you've got to believe you can be confident enough to win. Well, confidence has never been an issue for Zucker, who was raised in Las Vegas when he was 11 years old. He knew that if he wanted to be a big-time hockey player, he had to be in a better program. He asked his parents to let him to commute to Las Vegas or to Southern California every weekend. They said yes, and it worked out pretty well. Here's a chance for Stone, walks in, bounces off the mask of Campbell. And now the puck sent ahead to Charlie Coyle, but racing back is Gorman to take it away from Coyle. Jonathan Huberto picks it up. Next week, Huberto and Coyle will become teammates with St. John of the Quebec Major Junior League. Coyle is leaving Boston University to go to the queue. Huberto back for Gallagher, spins in front, sends it across. Dougie Hamilton with a shot. And Campbell sprawls out to dive on the loose puck. Mark Stone again, 20 feet from the net. Helps on the forecheck and then gets right to the front of the net. And the U.S. has done a terrible time, a terrible job of finding the players in the slot. Stone, one pivot and he's open enough to release the shot. That's such a quick release. Jack Campbell makes a good save on Mark Stone. His shooting percentage now plummeting, just seven goals on 16 shots. Here's Gallagher with a drive, and Gamble knocks that away. Here's Shifley on it, back he goes for Harrington, who holds the line for Canada. His shot was blocked by Bill Arnold. He shakes it off, that struck him in the hand, and Schwartz finds Shifley. Gallagher with it, flips it down to the American zone. Canadians out shooting the U.S., 16 to 6. Schwartz. Heels back in the corner. 
Tries to lay it down for Gallagher, who fights off a check. Gallagher's right back on it. Pivots back and slides it there for Shifley. Shifley goes to Harrington with a shot that was blocked. And Zarnik was in behind Harrington, but he hustled back and took the puck away. Harrington. London Knight facing a teammate tonight. Backhands it ahead for Connolly. In comes Brett Connolly. He was poked checked neatly by Jacob Truba. And Truba, one of three players eligible to return for the U.S. next year, plays that in deep. Truba, just 17 years old, is draft eligible next year. Now Connolly gets away with Howden. Two on one. In comes Connolly. Walks in and shoots. Scores! Brett Connolly! Party time in Edmonton. What if Brett Con Connolly give the shake and bake to Stephen Johns here? Johns thinks he's going to have a chance to keep the puck in. When he does it, he's not mobile enough to stay with Connolly. Connolly gives a little shift and goes right around him to the outside. Truba denies the pass, and Connolly makes no mistake as he beats Jack Campbell to the blocker side. Brett Connolly has scored now in all four games for Canada. And now Pearson sends it high and wide. Three nothing Canada leads, and the Canadians have out outscored their opposition 26 to three in the preliminary round. Fired wide by Austin Watson. And Gormley looks ahead for Pearson. That pass missed. Absolute nightmare for the United States, which came in as a pre-tournament co-favorite. They can go into the dressing room and go one of two ways here in the, at the end of this period. They can go hang their heads and then get their lunch fed to them for the next 40 minutes, or they can find some backbone and play the game because they've not competed here in the first 20 minutes. Austin Watson sends it in front for T.J. Tynan. Tynan banks it back to John Merrill. Merrill with a long shot. Knocked down by Wedgwood, banging out of his side. And now some pushing and shoving breaking out in front of Scott Wedgwood, who makes the save on the rebound. And Ryan Murray in the middle of things there, along with Ryan Strom. Point, point shot gets knocked down off of Harrington. Wedgwood makes a nice save as that hits Harrington. And then Brandon Sod in front of the net. And Wedgwood gets his pads together and then squeezes it underneath his right arm off a sod, and then the squeeze by Wedgwood before the scuffle ensues. 3-0-3 to go in the opening period. And we've got another pane of broken glass here. Fortunately, this is right down to the podium, so this shouldn't take long. Speaking of that, yesterday when the gates opened in the Finland-Denmark game and the ice crew came on to clean, the Denmark crease was cleaned by someone you might recognize. Bobby Orr was talking to the guys. He jumped on, grabbed a shovel, and cleaned the Danish crease. There were a number of fans at that end of the rink who looked down and said, is that Bobby Orr? It was indeed. The man himself who stepped on the ice and came backstage, posed the Mounties. And he could have used that shovel and still been in the Hall of Fame. Aiden Schwartz plays it in deep for Gallagher. Still looks great, doesn't he? Fired down by Kyle Rao. And Rao tries to center it. That was poked away neatly by Schwartz. And ahead he goes to Jenner, who's got Gallagher with him. Boone Jenner tried to lift that ahead for Gallagher. That was broken up. And picked up by J.T. Miller. Long lead pass for Charlie Coyle. That misses. Icing waved off as Wedgwood plays it away. Two and a half minutes left in the opening period. Ryan Murray with a big hit on Rao. And don't forget, coming up at the first intermission, the Chevrolet shoot for a million. Banked down the ice by Murray, and that'll be icing against Canada. Conley reacts as the puck goes around the boards, and when it hits Johns, Johns is in no man's land. One little pivot and shift, and then Brett Connolly shows the skills that had the Tampa Bay draft him. Tampa Bay Lightning draft him sixth overall in last year's entry draft, the 2010 draft. Connolly scored his first goal in November. 
in the National Hockey League. That pick, one of the great leaps of faith in the top 10 in the draft in recent memory. He played only 16 games in his draft year. He had hip and groin issues. Scored 10 times in those 16 games, but still. He opened the year with the Lightning, who subsequently loaned him to Team Canada. And one of the things they wanted him to do was work on his defensive game. And he takes Devontae Smith Pelly's spot on the checking line for Canada. Chris Needham collides hard there in the corner with Jamie Alexiak and Bill Arnold with it. Zucker deals it down for Arnold. Trying to find Edom, but instead blocks off the wall himself and shoots, and Wedgwood gets an arm on that and knocks it out of play. Scott Harrington has been among Canada's biggest surprises in this tournament. He's done an excellent job defensively. He gets rocked here by JT Miller behind the Canadian net. Getting worked on on the bench. When you get hit like that, your shoulders come together. And that, that is a, becomes a muscular problem that you have to work out. He's going to be tight in the morning. He's done all this great work in the tournament, Gord, both defensively and, of course, he had the big night offensively. He doesn't have a penalty either. In comes Boone General the backhand shot. That goes wide. Gormley sends it back down in front of the American goal, and Campbell steers that away. I wonder what one one we might see period. John Gibson dressed as the backup tonight come into the game for the U.S. Nifty move by Saad coming in, sends it back in front, but Alexi, or Gormley rather, got a stick on it and knocked that pass astray. John's ahead for Saad to Bukestad, kicked in, but played right back out by Mark Stone. Now a chance for Canada. Huberto in, stopped by Campbell. And the rebound. Goes to Strom, sends it back down. Stone back in front. Huberto backhand shot stopped by Campbell. Jonathan Huberto with two terrific chances in front. The United States just isn't playing in the game here. Look at this pass by Brandon Saad. He started the year with the Chicago Blackhawks. That's lazy, and it puts your teammate in a terrible spot. And then the Americans start chasing the puck around. Nobody's in front of the net. Jonathan Huberto is standing there alone with Jack Campbell. Forces Campbell to make his 16th save out of 19 shots in the period. Zucker turns it over. Now Freddie Hamilton tips it back to Alexiak. He's got Conley with him, and Conley moves in. Conley's long shot is blocked by Arnold. Gets it right back. Feeds down low to Howden. That pass misses. Final seconds now of the period. Edom shovels out ahead for Zucker. And Conley banks it down to the U.S. zone. Canada scores three times on 19 shots to take a 3-0 lead after the opening 20 minutes. What a period for, for Team Canada and Don Hay. He wanted to see discipline. He wanted them to work on the puck. They showed great depth of forecheck between the guys behind the goal line and the goal scorer out in front of the net. Eight saves from Wedgwood, Gorge, you can't draw up a better period. So Canada's dominant performance is continuing with an impressive opening period against the United States on the final day of the preliminary round at the 2012 World Junior Hockey Championship. The first period scoring summary is brought to you by Chevrolet, driving our world forward. 26 to 3, Canada has now outscored its opponents through 10 periods in this tournament. The second ahead with Gord Miller and Ray Ferraro. Ray, this first period really a microcosm of the opening round of the World Junior Championship where Canada has really moved along briskly and the U.S. just can't seem to find its game. You can talk about tendencies and you can talk about strategies and what could be and what should be. But at the bottom line of any hockey team is there has to be a work ethic. And the U.S. lost virtually every puck battle in that first period. This area in front of Jack Campbell was a garden spot for the Canadians. They were able to get open time and time again to create offense. Brett Connolly makes a nice rush to make it 
three nothing and then to top it off look at the pass chipped back by brandon Sott. there's no zip there's no energy on the u.s team and perhaps they're discouraged by their disappointing performance but you still have to go out and play you're still wearing your flag on your chest and this is a better U.S. team than performed in that first 20 minutes. They have to find it from deep inside themselves. Teams begin the second period. Five on five as Freddie Hamilton moves in on the eve of his 20th birthday. And he'll go to the medal round along with his brother Dougie. They're the first brother tandem to play for Canada in the same World Junior since the Molers, Randy and Mike, on the first program of excellence team in 1982. The Myers, Rob and Scott both played for Canada in different years. And, and Farhan Longi is reporting that uh, Scott Harrington will be done for the evening for Canada but will be fine to play in the semis. We saw him being worked on on the bench after being hit by JT Miller in that first period so Canada will be down a defenseman. They'll have just six for the rest of the night. And the relentless Don Hay discussing something with assistant coach George Burnett he doesn't like. Speaking of the Hamilton line, we saw Don Hay before this game and he handed me his lineup card. And wouldn't you know it, when he lists the lines one to four, he books Freddie Hamilton's line number one. There's just no surprise to that. No. When I called him the third line in a meeting with him earlier this week, he stopped me right in his tracks. Why is that our third line? Gallagher works his way in. Brendan Gallagher shoots. Campbell with a save. Rebound. Shifley poked it wide. And that was almost a three on all break for Canada. Shifley shoves Merrill off the puck. Tries to feed it back in front. And Archibald has it for the U.S. Josh Archibald stopped at a penalty shot by the Czech goaltender Peter Mrazek. In that game yesterday, a key point in that game. Now Charlie Coyle off the turnover, whistles that puck wide. And the puck goes all the way down to the American zone. In both of their losses, there was a crucial turning point for the U.S. In the game against the Finns, they tied it up one to one. They had a power play, and then John Gibson, their goaltender, took a penalty, an interference penalty. The Finns scored on a four on four. They got a power play goal after that four on four was finished, and the game was gone. And you mentioned 2-2 penalty shot, Archibald misses. And the Czechs go on to win with three late ones. Boom, Jenner digging in deep. Pulled away by Gravel, who goes ahead to Zarnik. And Austin Zarnik works his way in the shot right on, and Wedgwood makes the save on him. Michael Bornaval runs in hard to Jacob Truba. And now Truba with it, wears the full face shield as an underage player in this tournament. Anyone under 18 has to wear full facial protection. Now puck the fuck it into the U.S. bench, and we'll send you back to Farhan Lalji. Guys, we're with Barry Kazimer, and Barry, congratulations on cars for you and your friends. Just what was that whole experience like for you? Uh, shoot, shooting from center ice was pretty good. Uh, you know, I got most of the pucks in, but uh, from the far blue line, ice is pretty slow. So, you know, unfortunately, I didn't win the million, but three Chevrolet Volts, that's, that's, you know, that's great. What about the, the chance to meet Bobby Orr and to just go through all of this? The, the whole opportunity was great. You know, Bobby Orr is such a, he's such a great person, you know, so, and uh, TSN, uh, Chevrolet, they've all been good to me. And it's been great. Barry, thanks for this and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. He actually did pretty well. He had, he didn't miss by much. He needed four more to go. Brandon Saad puts that in front and Wedgwood hangs on to that. That'll count as the 11th shot of the game for the United States. And you get the sense that, barring a collapse, that Scott Wedgwood will have the Canadian goal the rest of the way? I do. I thought that the starter in this game clearly would have the upper hand in that. And as Bob McKenzie said a couple of days ago, it's not necessarily what has not been done by Mark Visentine. It's the way that, that Scott Wedgwood had performed. And a turnover by Canada. Centering pass goes off the leg of Brett Conley. Now back at the line. Johns can't hold it. Pretty hard to argue with a guy who has yet to allow a goal in the tournament. Gormley plays it across to Dougie Hamilton. 
And Hamilton plays it in. By the way, people have been asking, why do you call them Dougie Hamilton or Freddie Hamilton? That's what they want to be called. One's a junior, the other's named after a grandfather. And that's what they prefer. And so it shall be. There it is. Now, Jason Zucker, on the other hand, the American captain was Jason Zucker at two tournaments. For Team USA, for us and everyone else, he quietly asked before the tournament to have the pronunciation of his name changed. And the incredulous U.S. official said, well, why did you say something in Saskatoon three years ago? Maybe because at that time he was just happy to be there. He thought he was old enough now to... Now he's the captain. He's got some sway. There was Schwartz with a hit on Johns. The puck comes loose to Jaden. Schwartz with a backhand shot. Campbell makes a stop on him. Schwartz peels back behind the goal. Works it back to Alexia. His long shot eaten up by Campbell, but the rebound bounced away, and Bukestad's got it for the U.S. Nick Bukestad works in, shoots, a soft, soft dribble that trickles down in front. Schwartz actually deflected that onto his own goal, and the Canadians clear it out. Amy Alexiak out there for Canada, tried out for the U.S. team last year after playing for him in the summer under-18 tournament. But once you play in an IHF event, it's determined. Alexiak will be a Canadian. There is a way to play for other countries. You have to sit out for four years for international competition and apply for a waiver. Is that all? Yeah. So a lot of players that are Canadian that wind up in Switzerland and Austria elsewhere play for those countries. One of the jobs of Coach Don Hay, even though the team has romped through this first portion of the tournament, is to poke at the prod to get players to play to their peak capabilities. Jaden Schwartz, after a terrific pre-tournament start to this tournament, has kind of faded into the woodwork a little bit. And Don talked to us before the game about the want for Jaden to get on the inside again. He saw on his goal, he got to the net, had a secondary chance to score, and there he does great work behind the net, defending and protecting the puck. Bull, you long lead pass for Stone. Mark Stone in front for Strong. Couldn't get a good shot away. And JT Miller back the other way. Feeds out ahead to Zarnik. Drops it back for Miller. Feeds out in front. And Stone waiting for it. Has a look and sends it ahead into the feet of Strom. And Ryan Strom breaks in. Canada three wide. Strom waits. Shoots. He just missed high. And the puck deflects up and out of play. In that first period, Mark Stone scored his seventh of the tournament. Here he is on top of the face-off circle. His stick gets knocked out of his hands. He quickly picks it up, and watch how little he moves in the zone, but how each time he moves, his stick is in position to receive a puck. He's an outlet on every one of these passes, including the one that Jonathan Huberto puts on the tape, and Stone finishes. You have to make yourself available to receive the puck, and Stone was available three different times. Finally, the puck comes to him. Grant, you and I talk to scouts all the time who talk about the importance of skating. And certainly Mark Stone won't win any foot races on the ice, and yet he's a very effective player in the Western Hockey League and here. The question will be, will that stride take him at the next level? You have to remember that He's 19 years old, he will get stronger, so his stride will become a little bit more powerful, but he worked on it diligently last summer to become a better skater with the Ottawa Senators skating coach, and he'll have to continue to stay at it. John Merrill flips that down in the Canadian zone, but that'll be icing against the United States. And Mark Stone, who has scored 11 goals now, in seven games, including pre-competition action for Canada. He just lost the Western Hockey League point lead last night to Ty Ratty of the Portland Winterhawks. Stone hasn't played a game in the Western League since December the 9th. And Ratty was one of the, the last cuts for Team Canada at the selection camp. He plays in Portland. Out and down for Freddie Hamilton. That pass went astray. And now Quentin Houghton comes down low and aligns with Austin Watson. Freddie Hamilton steps up. And the puck comes free, but Alexiak forced to retreat with Brandon Saw bearing in on him. And Alexiak steps up, takes the puck away, and the play at the line is offside. 13 29 to go in the second period. You're watching the 2012 World Junior Hockey Championship. Quiet start to the second period. The Canadians have had control for the most part in this game. 
the U.S. has to find a way to claw themselves back. They need a spark, a chance, a hit. Find some energy somewhere. They're going to play two more games in the relegation tournament. Their result against Denmark carries over, so they'll go into the relegation with a 1-0 record. They'll then play Latvia, and they'll play the Swiss, and the worst of the four records will be bounced down. All of us at TSN want to take a moment to express our condolences to the family of Doug Sellers, a longtime producer here in Canada who produced many games in this building and moved on to the United States for the Fox Network, who passed away suddenly while playing hockey in Los Angeles to his wife, Barb, and his children, Kelsey and Tyler. Our deepest sympathies for your loss. Doug was a great television producer and a great friend of the game. Pearson to Boone Jenner. Jenner drops it off. Here's Ryan Murray back in front. Board of all of the shot knocked away by Campbell. And John Merrill has it. Lead pass for Bukestad. Nick Bukestad peeling back. The nephew of former NHLer Scott Bukestad, who spent nine years in the league. And now Born of all chips out ahead for Pearson. Tanner Pearson working in. Shoots Campbell to save. And he'll pounce on the rebound. Three on two develops because Ryan Murray gets up into the play, the smooth skating effort. Defenseman gets the puck into the middle and Bornevall's eyeball to eyeball right here with Jack Campbell. That's a nifty save by Campbell, but the play is made by Ryan Murray jumping up into the play and creating the odd man rush. Ryan Murray could set some kind of unofficial record for playing in under 18 tournaments. He's already played in three of them. Everett doesn't look like a playoff team this year, so he could suit up for a fourth under-18 tournament. There's a summer one that takes place. He's been in two of those, and there's a spring IHF under-18 tournament. He's played in one of those as well. Been the captain twice in his three appearances. you got to think after playing at the World Junior, he might get a pass. Lots of hockey ahead of Ryan Murray. For all the draft eligible players, their draft year is game after game after camp after combine after going to the draft. Then you go to your summer camp. There's no time off the ice for virtually a year for those players being drafted. Okay, team Hunter trying to sweep that in front. Gormley knocked that away. Zarnik got with a rolling puck. He fired it wide. And New Year's. Starting early here in Edmonton as the fans start to wave around the building with the Canadian team leading three to nothing. Ryan Strom sends it ahead to Jaden Schwartz. Schwartz peels back, lost the puck to Truba. He gets tripped up and there's a penalty coming up to Canada. So Schwartz turns the puck over. Strom with the trip. And Strom got whistled for a couple of stick penalties the other night against the Danes. That's a penalty that Don Hay will not like. You reach for the puck, you put yourself into a bad spot. You can see from Don's reaction of behind the, the bench that he's not thrilled with Ryan Strom's third stick penalty in two games. Well, the other night after the second one, he took his lineup card and just kind of jammed it into his pocket. Ryan Denning with the U.S. on the power play looks across to Edom with a shot that was blocked in front. And the puck rolls down to Wedge when he hangs on. Alexiak throws his man down. It was up to Nordy called for that earlier. And Emerson Edom and Jamie Alexiak have been jawing all night. Edom said, what are you going to do? And you saw Alexiak at the end say, well, good luck to you. As he just deposits Brandon Saad on his backside. That was pretty similar to the Tenorti penalty earlier in the game. Coyle wins the draw back, and here's Bukestad with it. Clendenning tries to chip that across. And Edom pushes it back for Clendenning with a shot high off the glass. Wedgwood down. The puck's still loose. And Saad has it for Edom. He turns it over. And Jenner's away. He's got Gallagher with him shorthanded. Boom, Jenner in. Feeds it front. Gallagher couldn't get a shot away. He buries Jack Campbell. The puck is still loose. Campbell's got a hold of Gallagher. And Gallagher's skate got tangled up with Campbell's mask. And the faceoff will come outside as Jack Campbell in a dangerous situation with the skates of Brendan Gallagher. 
Well, Jenner hangs on to the puck, shorthanded two on one. Clendenning slides across, and you see a pretty solid jolt to the mask of Jack Campbell from Brendan Gallagher's right hand and forearm as he goes for the loose puck. It's a pretty solid collision. The faceoff comes outside the zone, no penalty to Gallagher. And Dean Blaze wants a word with referee Soren Pearson from Sweden. But there's no penalty on the play. Merrill sends that down to the Canadian line. Dougie Hamilton backhands it back out. Minute 10 to go in this U.S. power play. We're midway through the second period. Canada leading 3-0 on the strength of three first period goals. Zucker to Tynan. Drops it back to Miller. He was stripped of the puck by Howden. Now it's played across to Arnold. And Bill Arnold sends it down. Tynan back in front. Lob back to Merrill. To Tynan. D.J. Tynan back for Merrill with bobble the puck for a moment. Now finds Zucker. Feeds it back in front. Arnold looks. Finds Miller. He couldn't pull the trigger. Now Tynan sends it across. And Zucker sends it high and wide. Tynan to Merrill. Long shot. Bounces down in front. Great save by Wedgwood. And Arnold on the deflection. The puck goes up and out, but they'll say it was deflected. And there'll be a face-off in the Canadian zone. Odd bounce in front of Scott Wedgwood as Zucker misses the net by about 10 feet, but the Americans get control again. It hits the pants of Miller, <laughs> then the shin pads of Arnold, and then a pad stop by Wedgwood. Here's Glenn Denning. Feeds that across to Edom, back out in the power play. Sharp angle shot by Saad, turned away by Wedgwood. Bukestad with it. Being harassed there by Jenner. Shovels that down for Saad. Looks back in front, the pass in behind Edom. Here comes Canada, shorthanded again. Brett Connolly with Boone Jenner. Connolly in across the line, walks back in front, poke check. And now Connolly will try to sweep that in deep. Two shorthanded two-on-ones for Canada. Bukestad. Plays it high off Connolly, and Wedgwood will hang on to that with Edom looking for a late rebound. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. New Year's Eve in Edmonton. It's the final day of competition in the opening round of the 2012 World Junior Hockey Championship. Everybody goes to Calgary now for both the medal round and the relegation. Next year, Germany joins the A pool after winning the B division. Only one team will go down under the new format of the World Junior Championship. I think Denmark and Latvia will be the two playing off against each other for the right to remain in the A pool. The United States is heading for no better than a seventh place finish. Canada, no matter what happens next Tuesday, will play for a medal in the 2012 tournament. Last time Canada didn't win a medal was 1998. They hit down in the corner. That was Alexiak, and now Tanner Pearson tries to play that ahead. And Tanner Pearson wins that battle for the puck. Archibald stepped into him. And Jonathan Huberto giving Merrill all he can handle down there. As Tenorti picks up the loose puck. First round pick of the Montreal Canadiens, Jared Tenorti. His dad was, there's no other way to put it, a rock on defense for 12 years in the NHL. Yes, sir, as he was mean. He was more than a rock. He was mean back then. Those were different rules back then, too. Oh. A player like Mark Tenorti. Or just fewer of them. Y yes, I think that's what it was. There was fewer of them. You get close to the net, look out. Turnover, and Stone trying to kick that ahead. You know Stone has got eyes like silver dollars every time he gets close to the puck in the offensive zone. Now he's got to leave on a change with seven and a half to go in the second period. Lead pass for Edom, the first round pick of the Anaheim Ducks from Long Beach, California. What a moment that was in L.A. when he was picked. Warner ball in across the line. And his pocket picked by Edom and Gallagher stepped into him. For the trailer, Kevin Gravel. Gravel drops it back for Zucker, who flips that into the corner. And now Arnold with a sharp angle shot at the side of the net. Loose puck in front. Zucker with a chance. And Wedgwood makes the stop on him. 3 0 Canada leads in the second period.
16 shots, 16 saves for Scott Wedgwood. His latest one is in front of the net. Zucker doesn't get good wood on it, but Wedgwood again, so calm in the blue paint, slides across to make the right pad save and smother the rebound. Dougie Hamilton plays that for Howden, lifts it ahead for Connolly. That pass misses, icing called against Canada. So scenarios are starting to clear up. There's still some more to be decided. We know the quarterfinal one on Monday will have Finland taking on the Slovaks, who scored four goals in the third period to come back against Switzerland. The loser of Russia, Sweden, later on tonight in Calgary, will take on the Czech Republic. And the winner of that game will face Canada in the semis. By the way, I want to correct something I said earlier about Ryan Murray. He can't play in the next under-18 tournament. He's born late in 93, so he's not eligible. So his long and illustrious under-18 career has come to an end. Chipped ahead to Miller. And now Zarnik on it. This tournament is open to players born in 92 or later. A centering pass knocked away, and Freddie Hamilton for the first day of the year, knocks that ahead. There's a chance to long one on Wedgwood. Sonic sends it across. Miller fanned on that with Wedgwood down. And Howden gets bumped there by Johns, and then Miller sends Freddie Hamilton flying as it's played down into the American zone. Johns lifts that ahead, and Murray has it. Battle of the loose puck. Rao racing for it. Alexiak knocked that away from him. Murray wraps that around hard, trying to find Shifley. The pass too far for him. And the puck skips down to the American zone. Perhaps the best U.S. chance of the night on a Dougie Hamilton turnover. Two on one in front of the net. Miller's all by himself. And when Zarnik goes across to him, Miller whips on it. At the tail end of this play, when Zarnik passes the puck across. He gets high stick for good measure by Dougie Hamilton, but the whiff by Miller to the right of Wedgwood. In about a half an hour in Calgary, Russia and Sweden will begin. We'll have a game for you on TSN 2. Dave Randorf and Craig Button for the call for you. Gallagher picks it away for Canada to Shifley. Mark Shifley walks in and shoots, and Campbell makes the stop, and a penalty coming up. It'll be interference against the United States, part of the slash. Rao will get it, and Canada will go on a power play late in the second period. The double whammy for Kyle Rao. Not only does he get a slashing penalty, but it's his stick that breaks. He's chasing Alexiak up. It's a baseball swing on his stick, and you see Rao's stick breaks. Alexiak, for some reason, doesn't. So a slashing penalty for Rao, and Canada will get onto the power play. And Alexia looked down at his stick and said, how did that happen? The stick sometimes breaks so easy, and at the oddest moments, I would have suspected that Alexiak's stick would be the one chopped in half. Nonetheless, it's the right call, a slashing penalty. So to the power play, they go. Schwartz sends it in front. Stone almost got a tip on that. Gallagher shoots. Humano thought he'd scored. He started raising his arms, but he just missed the net. Schwartz back with it. Feeds it across to Dougie Hamilton. Down to Gallagher. He shoots, and Campbell steers that away. Mark Stone battles for it. And the puck loose in the corner for Gallagher. Gallagher to Dougie Hamilton. Gallagher winds his way in and shoots. That was blocked by Merrill. Zarnik can't clear it out. Up along the wall, Dougie Hamilton steps up, kept it alive for the moment, and then bowled over Miller. Schwartz with it. Caden Schwartz lost the handle. Zarnik to the line and out. A chance now for Emerson Eaton on the breakaway. Wedgwood comes way out, flips it over, and then goes head over heels, and Wedgwood is shaken out. Scott Wedgwood is hurt. After vaulting over Emerson Edom. And Edom's going to get a penalty for this. And suddenly, the plot thickens in Edmonton. Race for the puck, and Edom knows he's not going to get there, so he wants to try and slide and block it. However, he clips the feet of Wedgwood. 
Wedgwood lands rather awkwardly. Edom knows he's not going to get it, so I believe his attempt is to block the puck. And Wedgwood with a little smile now, but you see, it's the feet of Edom catch the pads of Wedgwood, and he goes straight up into the air. A tripping penalty called on Emerson Edom. Referees are Vyacheslav Bulanov of Russia and Soren Pearson of Sweden. For the five on three for Canada for a minute and eight seconds. And Wedgwood remains in. So Wedgwood remains in. Like Harrington, where this may be an issue is tomorrow when you stiffen up after the game is done. Strom on the five on three, feeds it back to Gormley to bowl you. Now bowl you to Pearson, feeds it in front. Strom on it, goes back to Gormley, winds and fires at the flex wide. Strom on it, leaves it there for Gormley. 50 seconds to go on the first penalty. Bull, you walks in, tries to feather that in front. Loose puck, Campbell down. Here's Pearson. Oh, what a chance! And Jared Tenorti sprawled to block that. Now Bull, you waits, shoots. Campbell makes the save and hangs on. He's on the Americans for not showing enough backbone earlier as they scramble all over the place to keep themselves in touch with this game at 3 0. Jared Tenorti makes a skate save. Off of Tanner Pearson. Pearson's got the puck loose here, and Tenorti <laughs> makes the stop. Now Dougie Hamilton with it across for Jaden Schwartz. Feeds that down to Gallagher. Here's Schwartz with a shot. Rebound. Oh, Stone poked it wide. Back close to number eight in the tournament. 20 seconds to go on the first penalty. Dougie Hamilton with a shot. Bounces down to Uberdo. Jonathan Huberto winds his way in, drops it back to Hamilton to Schwartz. Schwartz in, waits, backdoor feed for Gallagher off the outside of the goal frame. Stone feeds it back to Hamilton. Dougie Hamilton, Huberto, Campbell down, loose puck in front. Gallagher spins and shoots, that was blocked. And the pass goes ahead to the American out of the box. It's Rao, Rao in, he shot it high. Bounces right back down in front, Rao taken down. And a penalty coming up to Canada. What a sequence that was. Wild chances in front of Jack Campbell. Nobody can capitalize. And as the Americans clear the zone, Kyle Rao happens to step out of the penalty box, which you always dream of when you're sitting in there, that the puck will come out. Cleared away, and here's Rao from the blue line in. Wedgwood may get a piece of this, actually, as Rao tries to settle the puck down. He does with his left elbow, and then the penalty here is Rao dives after being clipped by Dougie Hamilton. So now four on four for the next 35 seconds, and then the Americans, barring more penalties, will have a power play. John's back for it. Hasn't lacked for passion this game. No, it has the, the passion comes when both teams come to play. The Canadians dominated so much in the first period. John's now, with a shot off the outside of the goal. Sorry, Gordon. Now there's a pushback, and you see the level of play is, has just elevated itself on both sides. Shots are 27 18 Canada. Ryan Murray to Freddie Hamilton. One of four night Niagara Ice Dogs on the Canadian roster. Hit four Windsor Spitfires a couple of years ago. Now saw it, feeds it ahead to Edom. Emerson Edom rushing in, shoots, he missed high. Well, the Americans clearly want to go high on Scott Wedgwood. They've had two breakaways in the last minute. Shot them both up over top of the net. Saad collides with Gormley, and the U.S. is on the power play. And the centering pass is knocked away and fired down the ice by Brett Connolly. Under two to go now in the second period. J.T. Miller in across the line for the U.S. Brings it around. Zucker looking for it. And now Alexiak steps to Miller. Tynan pumps it down for Bill Arnold. And Arnold gets it there to Tynan. Jam play side of the goal. Wedgwood makes two quick stops. The puck is still loose. And Connolly fights off Tynan. And the puck comes loose to Zucker. Back he goes to Merrill. Merrill across to Arnold. Drops it down low, tied in a backdoor pass. Zucker missed it, and Connolly's got it for Canada. He'll fire it down, needing a change. 
Final seconds now, the Dougie Hamilton penalty. Canada has allowed just one power play goal on 20 opposition one attempts. Tynan drops it back. Miller feeds it in front. Watson with a puck in his feet. Couldn't get a shot away. And Ryan Murray the steamrolled through Tynan to play that to Gallagher. Rink Whiting goes for Dougie Hamilton. And Hamilton, for a few moments, was a forward. And then barreled down in front was Freddie Hamilton. As he was knocked down by Stephen Johns. Now Freddie Hamilton's got the puck. Side of the goal. Walks in and shoots. Campbell to save. Loose in front. Watson can't clear it, still bouncing around. Gallagher couldn't reach it. And Gallagher's all over Zarnik. Now Quinton Howden joins the pursuit. And Howden's going to get a penalty for that bump with John. Time winding down here in the second period. And Gormley touches it with 14 seconds to go. A penalty to Quinton Howden. Agitated Don Hay behind the benches. Howden's fine. He makes a terrific play here not to pull Johns down, but the penalty's going to come there. It looks like he really leans on top of him. He actually misses, but given the referee's view, it looks like a cross check, and that's the call to Quinton Howden. Boy, I think it's Freddie Hamilton for the faceoff. Freddie Hamilton. Lost the puck after winning the draw. Now Bukestad back to Clendenning with a shot. Wedge with a save. The rebound batted away by Brandon Gormley. As Gormley was alert to knock that down. And now Clendenning can't hold the line with two tenths of a second left in the second period. Scott Wedgwood has to make a difficult stop. They win the draw due to the Canadian team, but they don't get control of the puck. Through traffic, Wedgwood makes the first save and then a little bit of a nervous moment until Gormley is able to shovel it behind the goal. So no scoring in the second period. Canada leads the United States by a score of three to nothing. After 40 minutes, this is the 2012 World Junior Hockey Championship from Edmonton on TSN. The second period scoring summary is brought to you by Molson Canadian. Here's to the game this land gave us. Proud sponsor of Hockey Canada. Canada shooting the U.S. 28-20 and up by three on the board. Once again, Gordon Miller and Ray Ferraro. So Scott Wedgwood continues his role. Hasn't allowed a goal yet in the tournament, but has an eventful second period. He really did. But the core of Scott Wedgwood when I watch him play is how calm he is around the crease. No matter what the traffic is, Wedgwood seems to be able to keep a level head as he chases the view of the puck. He made several good saves in the second period, sharp saves, and then boldly came out and it was flipped over by a sliding Emerson Edom. Wedgwood was okay and he finished the period with these two saves, which to me epitomized the way Scott Wedgwood plays goal. Sound positionally, no extra movement, and he's been perfect, 46 for 46 in the tournament. Ben Howden's got a minute and 36 to serve in his penalty. And now it's Jack Campbell's turn to range up with Boone Jenner breaking in on him. And Campbell had the wall sealed by Jenner and Jack Campbell having an adventure down in the corner. T.J. Tynan looks ahead for Zucker. That pass missed. And now Merrill is being harassed by Jenner. And Merrill just falls behind the goal. J.T. Miller has it for Bill Arnold, but that play was five feet offside as Zucker was ahead of the play. Don Hay spoke to us before the game about an emphasis on all-out play because, as he said, I don't know any other way to play. He wanted to talk about a better discipline for his Canadian team, and I don't think they've quite reached that objective as they put themselves shorthanded way too often in this game. Don Hay comes into this game at 10 and 0. So he's tied with Terry Simpson and Dave King for second or third place, rather, on the all time games played list or games won list. And Brent Sutter and Craig Hartsburg in front of him. Two coaches, 
put up perfect records. Brandon Gormley shot the puck the length of the ice. He went over the glass and out. That's a penalty. So Gormley shoots it from here. And he clears the netting at the far end. It's a five on three for 55 seconds. So Wedgwood gets tested now as Clendenning has it. And Clendenning to Edom. Emerson Edom back for Adam Clendenning with a shot. Wedgwood kicks it out. And Clendenning has to hustle over to keep that alive. And the puck winds up on the stick. And Ryan Murray who bangs that down the ice. Clendenning. Feeds that ahead to Edom. In comes Emerson. Edom with a shot. Wedgwood with a blocker save. And Boone Jenner to the line, held by Clendenning. Clendenning across to Edom. Emerson Edom winds his way in. Feeds that down to Saad. Back to Edom with a wrist shot that goes off the end board. Bukestad with it. Winds his way back in front and shoots it. Save made by Wedgwood. And with Coyle on top of him, Wedgwood pokes that away. Clendenning dies but can't keep the play alive. And Howden is out for Canada. And now Howden takes the puck. Three on one. He's got Jenner and Gallagher. Gallagher in. Stands on the shot. Campbell makes the save. Brendan Gallagher on a three on one short handed chance. Couldn't get a good shot away. Gallagher wanted to go back across to Howden for the empty net or he whipped on it. Campbell makes the save. It's a five on three. That's a terrible shot on a five on three. You got to set it up and get yourself to the front of the net. Edom shoots it from the wing. That's an easy save for Wedgwood. But what ensues after is not. This shot just creeps wide. And then Charlie Coyle is on top of Wedgwood. The two exchange shoves. But Wedgwood and the penalty killers kill off the 54 seconds of five on three. Now 45 seconds to go on the Gormley penalty as Zucker peels back. Finds Tynan. And Zucker moves it ahead for Arnold. The pass too far for him as Alexiak turns quickly to pick it up. Now Zucker with a sign of the goal. Wedgwood down, two pokes by Zucker. The puck comes free to Gallagher. And he can't get it out. Merrill. Long shot. Tip just over the crossbar. Zucker with it. 15 seconds to go in the Gormley penalty. Zucker fans of that pass. Gallagher can't reach it. And now Gallagher does. He's got Howard two on one. Short handed. Here they come again. Gallagher in. Shoots. Hammered it wide. The puck comes all the way out the other side. Ryan Murray waiting for it. Here comes the U.S. Tied in the head for Miller. Got too far for him. And Wedgwood pounces on that. Adventures at both ends of the ring. This is the 10th Team Canada man advantage rush and their fourth while they've been shorthanded. Brendan Gallagher's got the puck of the two on one. He loves to shoot it and he rifles it wide. Earlier it's a three on one as Jenner comes out of the penalty box. And Gallagher wants to go back across to Howden but he whiffs on the pass. And Campbell makes the stop. Wow, Rao gets bumped there by Gormley. Strom, fans of the clearing attempt, but Gormley's got it for Huberdeau. Jonathan Huberdeau for Mark Stone. Open the scoring in this game in the first period with his seventh goal of the tournament. And here is Stone with it. Long lead pass for Ryan Strom. Strom fires it on goal, and Campbell hangs on to that. Well, quarterfinal Monday is our next stop in Calgary. And it all starts at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. We know that the Slovaks will play the Finns in one. The other will feature the Czech Republic against the loser of the Russia-Sweden game, which is starting in a few moments in Calgary. Draw wasn't done fairly. As the draw was won with the feet. And you can't do that in the International Ice Hockey Federation. Although we saw Michael Granlin win a faceoff with his feet in the earlier game. So Bornaball will take the draw. The reasoning for it apparently is that it's not a skill play. The reason for everything, I don't quite buy that explanation. <laughs> Bornemal chips it out. If you're just joining us, Scott Harrington has been tremendous for Canada on defense in this tournament. Left after a hard hit in the opening period. Will not return tonight. We're told he should be good for the semifinal on Tuesday. Bull you. 
He's out in front, and it's knocked out by Truba. As Ryan Murray's back to pick it up. Now Murray bounces that in. Shots are 30 to 25 in favor of Canada. Canada's won seven of the last eight meetings with the U.S., including a 4-1 win in the semifinal last year in Buffalo. The only American win in that stretch of games, the gold medal game in 2010, 6-5 in overtime. Alexiak follows that puck and speedy Archibald bats it ahead for Bukestad. Bukestad peels back, sends that softly down on goal, and Ryan Murray kicks it away. Now Freddie Hamilton waiting for it. The battle there with Rao, and Connolly has it. Looks ahead for Howden. That pass was broken up. And Merrill flips it down in front, but Connolly has it for Canada with Howden ahead of him. Canada changing as Connolly comes in. Steps around to Nordy. And Brett Connolly wraps it around. Feeds it to the back end in front. And now Shifley with it. Mark Shifley fights off Merrill. Leaves it down behind the goal. And Bukestad pivots, but Brendan Gallagher picked his pocket. Gallagher peels back again and again. Gallagher works his way to the side of the goal and drops it back for Gormley. Across he goes to Dougie Hamilton. His wrist shot goes off a stick way up in the air and high off the glass. And Gallagher bats at it and keeps it alive. Now Schwartz with it. He got spun around by Tenorti. And Schwartz peels back. In front of Gallagher, he failed the shot. Gormley with it. He fires it wide. Off the end boards. Gallagher shoots Campbell. Makes the catcher save. And he'll hang on. The smallest Canadian player at five foot eight is Brendan Gallagher. He pickpockets Nick Bukestad, who's six foot four, 205 pounds. That's simply a case of wanting the puck more than Bukestad. And now Bukestad's gassed. He's at the end of the shift. And Gallagher keeps the puck alive with a little baseball bunt and eventually gets himself to a scoring position where the puck just has not sat down for Gallagher in this third period. He's had three great chances to score in the first five and a half minutes. Nathan Bully with a shot that pinballs off Hubert Owen wide. And Steven Johns with it. Picks his way ahead and bangs it off the glass. Pesic waiting for it. The line's there with Edom. And the play is offside at the Canadian line with 14.06 to go in the third period. Brendan Gallagher's got a couple of goals in the tournament. Coming into the game, he led the team with 15 shots. He had four, or rather six in the first two periods. You throw a couple more on there. 44 goals and 41 goals in the last two years. This year, 24 goals in 28 games for the Vancouver Giants. From the South Delta Minor Hockey Association. Actually born here in Edmonton, but moved to BC as a youngster. Native of Tawasin, BC. His dad, Ian, is the strength and conditioning coach for the Vancouver Giants. They drafted him in the ninth round of the Bantam draft. 195th overall. Teams were passing at that point in the draft. Canada breaks out three on two. Bourneval with Jenner. Bourneval feeds it, but Jenner couldn't get a shot away. Merrill blocking. Now Campbell reaches back, throws his stick. And a penalty coming up. Zucker gets a high stick up on Jenner. And now there's some nastiness down in the corner. Bill Arnold reaching in as well. Jenner is down there. Here we go with another. And it looks as though Canada will go to the power play when we come back. Offsetting penalties is Bill Arnold and Boone Jenner sit in the penalty box for their respective teams. Jenner gets whistled for this. He was arguing that he didn't hear a whistle. And there you see the penalty to Arnold. It wasn't the high stick on Zucker, it was the cross check by Arnold. From the face on, Edom has it for the U.S. And Emerson Edom comes streaking in. Edom off the wing, shoots, and Wedgwood knocks that rebound way up in the air as Huberto swings back to pick it up. Emerson Edom still looking for his first goal in this World Junior Championship. He had won in six games last year for the U.S. 30 goals in the Western Hockey League, but it's not translated to this next level for him. In comes Stroh, lines and fires, and Campbell makes the stop. Here again, Farhan Lalji. 
Gord, up 3-0 after the first period. Team Canada's coaching staff knew the Americans weren't going to go away, and as has been the case the last couple of games, they thought the penalty troubles got the Americans some momentum. Now, speaking to assistant coach Ryan Huska, he said they also had some problems on line changes because they didn't get their dump-ins all the way in. They were about three-quarters of the way in, and their players wound up getting caught up ice. I also asked him if they were surprised it wasn't a very chippy first 40 minutes. He said no, but we still got 20 minutes to go, and it seems to be playing out that way now here in the third. Thank you, Farhan. 12.45 to go in the third. Charlie Coyle busting in for the U.S. Moves in front. Wedgwood turns him away. And Wedgwood hangs on as Charlie Coyle. Attention now a property of the Minnesota Wild came streaking in. Coyle played just a couple of shifts in the crushing loss yesterday against the Czechs. He was sick. He scored three goals in the first game against Denmark and didn't hasn't dented the score sheet since. There he gets a nice lead pass and is turned away by Wedgwood. Hurry ahead to Howden, four on four here as Howden comes busting in. Tries to drop it back for Murray. Truba got in his way and now this is Ryan Murray back with it. Native of White City, Saskatchewan, just outside Regina. Bukestad. Sends it ahead to Zucker. Dougie Hamilton steps into him. Stormy goes back as Bukestad collides with him. Bukestad with a hard hit on Dave Fusil of the Team Czech Republic yesterday. The Vancouver Giant defenseman could not play today against the Finns. Connolly drops it off. Looking for the return pass from Shifley. That's broken up by Bukestad. The backhand that out of the zone. And Gormley leaves it there for Connolly. Brett Connolly. Jumping in across the line. Carly with a long shot. Campbell, the pad save. The rebound skipped away from Shifley. Now Tenorti leads the rush for the U.S. Gets crunched there by Murray. Here Tenorti has a goal in this tournament for the U.S. Has won in 83 games over the last two years. Over the London Knights. Look out, Huberto just missed by Jacob Truba. That was close. Long shot goes down to Campbell. And he'll hang on. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Standing room only here in Edmonton tonight. And the home team is up 3 to nothing on the United States. Next stop for Canada. Trip down to Calgary and then the semifinals. They'll play the second semifinal on Tuesday night. Jonathan Huberto with a long shot that was deflected wide by Gravel. And Watson looks ahead. The pass for Rao tripped up Archibald. And Bolu swings back to pick it up. Bolu's pass went off the referee's skate. And that was torn with those great hands. Just bats out of midair and sends it down to the American line. Stone steals it away again, and Pesic looks ahead for Huberto. And Canada will change as Don Hay calls his troops obediently to the bench. Lee Jenner just missed John Merrill there, and Ryan Murray has it. Tanner Pearson turned it over. In comes Miller. Coyle with a shot, scores! Charlie Coyle off the turnover. And the U.S. is on the board, down 3-1. With 10 minutes left in the third period, a turnover by the Canadians. Tanner Pearson hangs onto the puck too long in the sidewall and then forces it to Boone Jenner. Coyle walks right into the, to the turnover. And this is a big league release from Charlie Coyle as he beats Scott Wedgwood up over the glove. So Charlie Coyle opened the tournament with a hat trick against Denmark, but hadn't scored since. And Scott Wedgwood has allowed his first goal at the World Junior Championship. This is to number 11, JT Miller. George sends it in deep now, and Tenorti back for it. I think you have to give the United States credit after a lackluster first period. Lots of fight in the last two. Well, I said that they would go back and either hang their head and get their lunch handed to them or they'd show some backbone, and they've really pushed back here in the last 30 minutes of this hockey game because it was a pretty dozy first 20 for them. 
Schwartz peels back. Lose it down for Gallagher. Now Scheifele comes in to help out. And the loose puck fed ahead by Tenorti, but it goes all the way down to the Canadian zone, and that's icing. On behalf of Dallas Premier Sponsor of Tyson. Well, Jared Tenorti has been a battler throughout this thing for the U.S. It really has, but they're forced with battling with this tenacity of Gallagher and Schwartz. Schwartz gets back into the play here and keeps it alive. This is what Don Hay was talking about prior to the game, that you can't play on the outside of the game, you need to be on the inside of the game. And this has been Schwartz and Gallagher's most effective game of the tournament. Pass the midway point now, the third period. And Alexiak has it. Jamie Alexiak facing the United States for the first time after playing for them in the summer under 18 two years ago and trying out for them last year. The dual citizen who elected to play for Canada. Brandon Saad picks up the loose puck in the corner and Saad fights for it. Saad crisscrossing in the corner with Bukes dead. Spins back, tries to feed that puck back and now Howden can't get to it. Here's Bukestad. Bukestad feeds it back. John shoots, hit the goal post. Back it goes. Ravel with a shot. That deflected and just missed. John with another shot. That hit. Beaulieu up high. Nathan Beaulieu struck in the face with that shot. Hasn't moved. And just now getting to his feet, but that struck him flush. Immediately the official waved for the trainer. And he is bleeding. Oh boy. This comes at the end of a shift where the Americans get another great chance. Stephen Johns point blank shot right off the goal post off of the Bukestad pass. And then here's the slap shot that deflects and hits Bolu up high. Fortunately, Bolu is okay. This puck actually is not deflected. Under his own power, Nathan Beaulieu goes to the bench. You see where he's bleeding from the mouth. And there's some significant swelling there. Beaulieu's dad, Jacques, is the coach and general manager of the Sarnia Sting hey, man, make sure you stay in, your in the Ontario the Hockey League. And actually, the as the general manager in St. John, drafted his son. He got fired shortly afterwards, and Beaulieu could have elected or asked to play in the Ontario Hockey League, but elected to stay in St. John. And on the right side of Beaulieu's face is swelling noticeably. So Scott Harrington has already left this game, and Beaulieu has been struck badly. No time for him to react, or the puck came up so quickly on him. By the way, from Calgary, the update. Russia up 2-0 on the Swedes in the early going. Winner of that game. Gets a berth in the semifinals on Tuesday as well. Back of the line is Merrill. His shot goes off the leg of Huberto. Well, Zarnik sends it in. Miller banks it back to Merrill. Here's Zarnik with it. Feeds it across and throws it a long shot. It pit balls down in front. Zarnik couldn't reach it. And now Huberto chips it out. He's got Strom with him. Jonathan Huberto. Two on one with Strom. Huberto in. Trying to play it across and missed Strom. Now Stone with a shot. And Huberto couldn't quite get to it. Through the middle is Coyle who feeds it down. Warmly plays out ahead, and Zucker tries to find Arnold. Gallagher got in the way of that pass, and in comes Brendan Gallagher. Two Americans converged on him, Truba and Edom. Nathan Bolu remains on the Canadian bench with his helmet off and a towel to his face. Gallagher to Schwartz. Pokes out ahead for Gallagher. Seven to go now in the third period. Canada leading three to one. And away comes Zucker with it. Moves it ahead. Arnold got bumped there. And a hard 
Collision with Dougie Hamilton. Now a wraparound try. Zucker scores. Jason Zucker brings the U.S. within a goal with 6.48 to go. This is good work by the Americans below the goal line. This is nothing but an effort play. Zucker, the captain, will be the beneficiary of some nice work by Arnold, who takes the hit from both Canadian defensemen, both of them on the same side of the net, Dougie Hamilton and Gormley. And when Edom pokes the puck to Zucker, Zucker's trying to throw this back in front of the net. It hits the left heel of Wedgwood and deflects in. And for the first time in this tournament, Canada is under some duress, and Don Hay calls a timeout. You said it earlier, Ray. He was asked how his team would approach tonight's game, and he said two words, all out. And he calls timeout here with his team's lead, cut to a goal. And as all this has happened, Nathan Beaulieu has gone to the Canadian dressing room. 5D left for the Canadians as we look at Beaulieu slowly walking back to the Canadian locker room. What you worry about there is a broken jaw. You don't know, obviously, but... So after the timeout, Hay comes back with his most trusted forward line in Freddie Hamilton, Connolly, and Quinton Howden. And Tenorti with it now. Six and a half to go in the third period. And the U.S. has scored twice here in the third period to pull close. Bukestad comes flying in. The reaction by Zucker told you a lot as he went leaping in the air after scoring that goal. Zucker with his second of the tournament. Two years ago, a much different emotion for Zucker as he was with the U.S. team when it won gold in Saskatoon. So was Jack Campbell, the goaltender. Charlie Coyle swings that rink wide for Tenorti. And that play is offside at the Canadian line. Back to Edmonton and the 2012 World Junior after this. One goal coming into this evening's game for Jason Zucker. Said that they would win. Then Kind of inched off that, said it's not a guarantee, but you play to win and we expect that we'll play well. Well, they were dozy in the first period, but they've really played with some vigor in the last 35 minutes of this game and now have closed on goals by Coyle and Zucker, two of their big guns here in the third period. They ran into two red-hot goaltenders, Peter Morazek and Sammy Adegalio. Now Miller. Rolls the puck in front, that's hammered wide by Zarnik. Canada now hanging on. Well, if Don Hay wanted his team to be tested in this game, it's getting it. But for the first time, Team Canada's been pushed. We'll see what the response is with five minutes left. That pass from Dougie Hamilton. Forces an icing and the faceoff back to the Canadian zone. Tonight's game story is brought to you by Molson Canadian. Here's to the game this land gave us. Proud sponsor of Hockey Canada, Ryan Strom and Mark Stone continue their scoring ways. Wedge will have one goal in two games in this tournament. Jonathan Huberdeau has got seven assists. And the draw not done fairly again. Arnold will dispute that, and Don Hay will try to make a line change. Not sure that's allowed. But Hamilton has to come back on the ice. Bornaval will take the draw against Zucker. Shots are now 34 to 29 in favor of Canada. Merrill can't reach it, and back is Tenorti. Tenorti being harassed there by Bornaval, who almost had a break. Back the other way comes Zucker. He's got Edom with him. The centering pass is broken up by Hamilton. Now Edom tries to feed it in front. Gormley gets there and hacks it high off the glass. Edom knocks it down. Merrill keeps it alive. Being around there by Bourneval and Jenner. And Merrill holds the line. That long shot deflected. And almost bounced to Arnold alone in front. Merrill waiting for teammates to get onside. He slides it ahead to Arnold. Arnold works it. Feeds it in front. Wedgwood down the puck. Loose. Wedgwood still down the jam away. 
And Tenorti with one hand on the stick shovels that towards the goal. And the Canadians clear it. Wedgwood had to fight off the traffic of Edom on the backside as Arnold made a really nice move to the outside and a strong pass across. Wedgwood battled Edom to make the save. And now an offside at the American line, but the concern for Canada, two injured blue liners. Back to the first period. DJ, or JT Miller with a solid hit on Harrington. That was it for Harrington for the night. And then Beaulieu hit in the mouth with a slap shot. Hockey Canada officials have said they believe that Harrington will be okay for the semifinal. On Tuesday, of course, there's no word yet on Nathan Beaulieu. Long lead pass goes to Brandon. Saw it busting in and saw it slid that wide. Out the other side comes Huberto. Jonathan Huberto sends it ahead. Gravel. Off the head for Bukes. Had it turned it over. And Stone flips that down. Shots of 10 6 US here in the third period. Watson comes flying in. Shifley can't clear it out. Now Alexiuk banks it ahead, but the puck was knocked down by Shaw. Watson centers it. Bukes stand in. Taking the backhand shot away. Spins and fires and puts it through the crease. Now back to Merrill. Across he goes to the Nordy. Waits, winds with the traffic set, but Connolly deflected the puck up and out of play. Well, for all your Team Canada news and to follow the 2012 IHF World Junior Championship, be sure to bookmark hockeycanada.ca for Team Canada information, live stats, and links to other Hockey Canada events, teams, and programs. Arizona, Ray Ferraro, Farhan Longi, James Duffy, Bob McKenzie, the whole gang here on New Year's Eve. And on behalf of all of us at TSN, wishing you, yours, a very happy and safe 2012. JT Miller sends it ahead to Zarnik. Warmly coming back. And meanwhile, Nathan Beaulieu returns to the Canadian bench, minus his gloves. Carrying an ice bag. Can't imagine he feels very good right now. And his helmet back. Look at the swelling of it. I guess you can tell where he was hit with the puck. Directly on the right cheek. Zarnik sends that ahead for Coyle. Charlie Coyle, who opened the scoring for the U.S. Looks that down in the Canadian zone with two and a half to go in the third period. And now Howden has it away with Connolly. But Howden quickly chips that down, and Canada will change. As Stone, Jenner, and Huberto come on for Canada. Stephen John looks ahead for Edom. And Wedgwood plays that away from him neatly. So Boone Jenner takes the spot of Ryan Strom with a one goal lead here under two and a half minutes left. Edom shovels that down, Wedgwood missed it. And Arnold centers it right in the stick of Huberto. He's got Stone with it. Mark Stone works his way in. Stone with a long shot, Campbell makes the save. Two to go now in the third period. Back comes Edom across the line for the U.S. Drops it up for Arnold, back in front, Wedgwood gloves that as Edom was looking for the bouncing puck. Hey, fans, a reminder to stay in your seats following the winning anthem for a special thank you and New Year's Eve is So now every face-off becomes more and more critical. Canada has Boone Jenner, who leads the tournament in face-off percentages. And Dean Blaze will take his time out with a minute 50 remaining. Now the question is, will he leave Campbell in the goal for now or take him out with the face-off in the Canadian zone? I leave him in, but I have my goaltender outside the hash marks. I always worry if you don't need, if you're not under time stress yet, which they're not, if you lose the face-off, it's too easy to get to the red line and shoot it in an empty net. Brian Huska drawing the 
the defensive coverages for Canada. And Jenner will take the draw. Looks as though Campbell will remain on the U.S. bench, so the net empty with a minute 50 to go. The second centerman out here for Canada will be Freddie Hamilton. And most certainly the Americans will have their big guns and they do Coyle, Arnold, Edom. Bukes that interesting that Brandon saw it, who's been a pretty much a no-show in this game and in the tournament is on the bench. Coyle sends that in front, just missed Miller. Gallagher's got it, empty net, tried to flip it ahead. That was knocked down by Merrill. Needham comes in, Gormley steps into him. Gallagher comes back for it. Looks across, Murray high off the glass. Skips it down to the American zone. Icing was waved off. As it deflected off an American player, apparently. Lead pass for Arnold, he's got Coyle with him. Charlie Coyle, back for Arnold. Centers it, that was blocked by Murray. Jenner fights for the puck. Miller comes in, plays it back. Merrill waits, steps around Gallagher, shoots, wins with the save. The rebound gets to Murray. Gallagher's got it. Banks it off the glass and softly down. That will allow Canada to get part of a change in. Under a minute to go now in the third period. Buggy Hamilton has a chip by him, but from the wrong side of center ice, it's an icing call against the United States. Saved by Scott Wedgwood. John Merrill through traffic. And Wedgwood just gets a toe on it. And Wedgwood makes the save. By the way, if you're wondering why they're booing, they just announced the 50-50 jackpot over $146,000. The winning number won't be posted until 10.30 tonight because of overwhelming ticket sales. 146 G's. So they're going to post it online at 10.30 tonight. 146,000. 45 seconds to go. Campbell makes his way back to the U.S. bench. The extra skaters on. It's Archibald. Murray back for it. Canada built up a 3 nothing lead after one, but the U.S. is spot back at Arnold. Whistles that wide. Back in the line is Merrill. He shoots that tip wide. Connolly on it. Banks it ahead. Schwartz looking ahead for Stroh. That pass went astray. And Bukestad has it. Takes a whack from Connolly. Back hands it down. 15 seconds to go. Schwartz on it. Coyle looks down for Bukestad. Gormley banks it out. And that's icing. 4.4 seconds left. There'll be one more face-off down in the Canadian zone. Canada, Canada has one centerman on the ice. That's Ryan Strom. One natural centerman. But it looks like, oh, well, they're going to get Strom in to take the draw against Arnold, who's very good on the draw. There's enough time for a win and a one-time pass to Bukestad. Miller can't get the shot away. Schwartz bats it ahead, and time expires. Canada 4-0 through the round-robin portion of the tournament. Next stop, the semifinals on Tuesday in Calgary. Canada outscores its competition 26-5 in the first four games. As the coaches shake hands, if Dean Blaze was looking for his team to play with pride, they certainly did in the last 40 minutes. They get one last gasp at it, but Jaden Schwartz is able to scuttle the play as the puck chips towards Bukestad. Bukestad was going to be the shooter. Jack Campbell has a terrific night in goal, as you see his teammates congratulating him. They give the Canadians all they can handle. The Team Canada wins with three first period goals. The United States has two games remaining. They'll be in the relegation round. The best the Americans could finish in the tournament is seven. The time now for the player of the game presentations and the national anthem.
The player of the game for Team USA is number eight, Jacob Truba. The joueur du match pour les États-Unis est numéro 8, Jacob Truba. The player of the game for Team Canada is number 12, Brendan Gallagher. As part of international ice hockey tradition, we ask you to please remain standing for the playing of O Canada.